Good morning, everyone. I'll just try, there we go, now we have pulpit sound. Good to see all of you. This is Pentecost Sunday, hence the extra color, red and red flowers and the beautiful banners that we hardly ever see because they technically just go up for one day, which is today. But we decided, I think Marion, maybe you made them? Yes. We decided, they're so gorgeous, they're just going to stay up until September. Because really, we are in the season of Pentecost the whole way through until Creation Sunday starts in September, so we can enjoy these beautiful Pentecost banners for the next little bit. So thank you, Marion. Amen. I hear an amen. That's great. So the fire of the Spirit on this day kindles our hearts and empowers us both as a church and as individuals. Today is also the second anniversary of Westworth becoming an affirming ministry. And we, when we will be celebrating the diversity of Westworth on the day of Pentecost, when the first gathering of Christians celebrated their diversity of languages and cultures. And because of that, I, you know, all know Heather, but we want to welcome Reverend Heather Robbins, who is the affirming team leader as co-officiant in today's service. And she will explain what she's wearing. <clears throat> this, um, 20 years ago, I was commissioned as a diaconal minister. The history of diaconia goes all the way back to Stephen, who was the first deacon, and to the deaconesses that uh, trained at, uh, at in the, with the Methodist Church and later the United Church. And uh, in, 19, in the 80s sometime, I don't know the exact date, we were renamed as diaconal ministers. This is called a diaconal apron to represent the service that diaconal uh, ministers, deacons, and deaconesses use uh, when they're serving. This was gifted to me by Susan Tuff, who was my uh, minister when I was a student at Norwood. And someone had given it to her. It's made in Chicago. And I am surrounded by the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. So it's so appropriate on Pentecost, and it means a lot to me. I don't wear it very often, but on my day of commissioning, and the, I think at the service, I can't actually remember 20 years ago that well, but uh, I did explain this apron, um, and it is also a vestment. So I decided today it was a good day to wear it, and Lorraine agreed. Thank you. <clears throat> As we gather virtually and together in worship, we light the Christ candle to remind us of Christ's presence. We take the peace of Christ to light our peace candle as we pray for peace throughout the world. And we take the love of Christ to light our diversity candle to let you know that no matter who you are, no matter whom you love, you belong here.
Please join me with the words printed in your bulletin, if you will read the, bo the bolded words. We are treaty people. We live and work. We worship and play on treaty land and territory. The traditional lands of the Anishinaabe Cree, OG Cree, and Dakota nations, and the homeland of the Red River Métis Nation. We receive water from Shoal Lake on Treaty 3 land and hydropower from all five treaty lands in Manitoba. We are all treaty people. Let us continue with our call to worship. Thank you, Kaleidoscope God, for the strong colors of Pentecost. Thank you for blue and green, rippling and rain, scouring and roaring gales of the spirit, winds of change. Thank you for red and yellow, sparkling and blazing, leaping and alighting in tongues of fire, torches of courage. Thank you for white and silver, quieting and consoling, inspiring and sorting, in love of peace, messenger of hope. Thank you for all these colors of love and longing, wildness and wisdom, challenge and compassion. Holy One, color our lives by your mighty spirit that we change, find courage, radiate hope, and be your disciples of faith and compassion. I invite Katie forward. They have a story, I'm sure, for all of those that are young at heart, as well as the little people that are here. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a story today, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to call this my last children's time of the 2023 spring season. Um, and I just wanted to give the adults here an update on what's going on downstairs, because you guys don't always get the chance to get to know what's happening. So today is the last official day of church school. The kids and I are going to have ice cream sandwiches. Um, if I have some leftovers, maybe you could have one too. Um, and then June is going to be Blue Jean Sunday School, which is a tradition a lot of you are very familiar with. Um, and I'm very excited it's happening all of June. And you're all invited to come join me downstairs if you so wish. Um, and then our VBS is happening the last week of August. So if any of you have kids or grandkids that are interested, please don't hesitate to talk to me, talk to Leslie, talk to Julia. Um, we have registration forms just outside on the church school board. And the last thing is that everything will resume in September with youth group over again in church school. And I'm really excited. Um, I am hoping this upcoming year I'm going to teach the kids a song of affirmation that we're just going to read every time we start church school. And I just want to read it to you guys. It's really short and sweet. Um, so I'm going to read a line and then you guys can repeat it back to me. Who I am is good. I am loved. I am worthy. I am enough. Thank you. Good morning and have a great day. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> the hymn is in more voices. Number one, let us build a house. Thank you. 
I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession that's printed in the bulletin. We will all pray together. Let us pray. Loving God, we come into your presence today to hear your word. Feel your presence and ready ourselves to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. Some of us come needing to forgive another. Others come needing forgiveness. We all come knowing that you alone can infuse us with the peace and grace to both give and receive forgiveness. Be with us as we continue in our worship this day. God loves us with a love beyond our imaginations and forgives us with the spirit of grace. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us offer Christ's peace to one another as we stand in place and turn to one another, catching someone's eye. And you may have a prayer position or your hand over your heart to greet others with the Christ peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Our first scripture reading is taken from Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 to 30. By himself, Moses was leading his people. When the challenges facing them were too much for the people and their complaints too much for Moses to bear alone, Moses asked God for help. God told Moses to choose 70 people amongst the community who are known as elders. With their collective wisdom, they would help to lead the people. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 of the elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of his spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. 
And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the testimony to the word. Our second scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8 and 11 through 21. On this day of Pentecost, we remember the beginnings of the early church over 2,000 years ago when the people gathered together and received the power of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying in the church.
I think this is going to be a season of tears for me, but wow, that was just incredible. Woo. It was for me too, and to tell you the truth, it reminded me of when my brother died and was released and how much the spirit was present. <laughs> so true. How much music enlivens our lives and our journeys. Okay, Lorraine, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that fine start, here we go. So we had a fabulous story from Numbers that we very rarely hear in our services. To me, it's quite fascinating. And I agree. There are a number of important themes in this story that relate to our day. Let's recount the backstory. Mm, the backstory. So the backstory is quite revealing about Moses' vulnerability. The people were getting awfully tired of manna. Now, this is God's gift of food for them. It was this honey, flaky substance that was a miracle food, and it was keeping them alive and alive and alive. And after some time, they just got so tired of eating it, they began to yearn for even while slaves, those fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. Even the two, meat. The two baskets. Oh, the two baskets. Yes. <laughs> and even meat. Oh, my. Even, sorry for those who are vegetarian. They yearn for meat. Um, and they began grumbling, manna, manna. All I see is manna. I can smell it from my pores. I can taste it throughout the night. I think I might also get a bit tired of eating manna. The Hebrew people had every right to grumble. The problem was that they began to take it out on Moses, who found himself caught in the middle. Lord, we've got a problem here. My people just can't stomach another day of manna. Please show us where we can find other food. But even though Moses sympathized with the people and interceded for them, he began to tire of their negativity. Their constant complaints were grinding him down to the point where he didn't even want to be with them anymore. It is astounding how damaging and contagious negativity can be. 
it's much easier to be critical than to build others up. Especially if you don't like something or someone. Mm -hmm. But negativity can just spread like wildfire and be quite demoralizing. It almost did Moses in. No wonder he was so seriously depressed. Moses realized that he was simply not able to care for everyone by himself any longer. That's when Moses heard God wisely telling him to choose 70 elders who could help him with his people. So once Moses had selected the elders, they all met in a tent outside of camp. Now, this was a pretty big tent because there were 70 of them. Mm -hmm. But it was traditionally the place they had actually set up as a place of retreat from the camp. And people went to this tent to receive wisdom, a word of God. It, it is, was a perfect place to meet and also discuss amongst these chosen elders how they could be effective leaders as one united mm -hmm. team. Well, this kind of reminds me of yesterday's leadership team retreat, which was an exciting day. <laughs> We spent the morning in a workshop discussing how we can better be an affirming ministry here at Westworth. Bree Kama from Rainbow Resource Center was a very capable facilitator of our morning together. They led us in an engaging and informative session relating to learnings that are important to this community of faith as we continue our journey as an affirming ministry in the United Church. We even started with a new candle for our going into our third year because everything is new every day. Anyways, we are called to be public, intentional, and explicit in the life and work of this community. We're public by the flag that is outside, by the rainbow cross by the rainbow um, cloth. And so Brie refreshed us and explained to us some of the differences that we all have. How do we define and understand gender? Without going into detail as they did, I will list how people's gender can be understood. Well, first of all, and we've all seen this, is gender reveal. <laughs> so sex at birth is one way. But there are other factors considered besides that obvious thing, uh, which is hormones and chromosomes and other things that we can't see that aren't visible. Gender identity was her next point. And it's about how a person feels in their soul and their body. It's a sense of self, our gender identity. And this led to gender expression. Gender expression is how we present ourselves to the world. Most people think uh, women wear skirts, but I have a Scottish heritage, and the men wear skirts. And I don't own a skirt. <laughs> yeah, and you don't own a skirt. And many, and women mostly wear pants nowadays. We're liberated. <laughs> After gender expression comes attraction and culture, which tell us more about gender. Our traits that are not visible, such as our spirituality, our intellect, our emotions, are part of who we are. We gathered yesterday as a community to learn. There was conversation about pronouns, and especially the challenges and learnings regarding the pronouns they, them. 
Our culture and upbringing often struggle to understand how they, them, can be singular. And we learned that they was a common singular pronoun centuries ago. We also have used forever uh, there and you as a singular, which is also used as a plural. So there's, there was lots to absorb. When we misgender, and that is using an incorrect pronoun for someone who has shared what their pronoun might be, it can be harmful and disturbing to that person. We learned to apologize and move on. Don't make a big deal about it. Say, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. They, and move on. To welcome folks into the learning and not scold or make excuses. Lorraine and I have enjoyed this saying, to call in instead of calling out. So there's one more part of Moses' story that fascinates me. When the 70 elders were consecrated, and that's similar to being ordained or commissioned or confirmed or even baptized, every time we do those four things, we, we lay hands on people. And it's, it's the community both blessing the person and acknowledging that the Spirit is coming to rest on them. So there's, there's a tremendous blessing happening there. That's what happened, our guess is, with the elders who were in the camp. But they then discovered two other people who were not the chosen ones. They were not selected to be one of the 70 elders. They began, evidently, being spirit-blessed as well, began offering the same kind of spirit-inspired leadership to the people. Well, the elders weren't too happy about it. How dare they pretend to be leaders and elders? They weren't the chosen ones. But Moses was alarmed by that kind of jealousy and said to them, oh, oh, that everyone could offer such spirit-inspired leadership. One of the strengths of Westworth is lay leadership. We have such a solid, competent group of skilled leaders who are covenanted every year at our AGM, similar to the 70 elders consecrated in the tent. We're pretty good at welcoming new people into positions of leadership according to their interests and gifts, but we sometimes miss out people. That's why it's important to listen carefully to the spirit and to each other and pay attention to the ideas of newcomers. The afternoon part of our retreat offered the council and team leaders the opportunity to give feedback about the morning and also to listen and comment on the different aspects of leadership and work being done. We were also reminded that Westworth is a community of faith made up of members and adherents, longtime folk and new folks, and that our part in the health and well-being of this community includes participation in decision-making and not just leaving it to the council and leaders. And so we need to hear from everyone. I'm also grateful for a good number of retired ministers who are in our midst in this congregation. And they're able to offer leadership in whatever way they're able. Emergency pastoral care, pulpit supply, prayers, phone calls. There's all sorts of ways and service that, that these ministries are being offered. And they too have been covenanted with Westworth. Some of them, including Eleanor Gieb and Mac Watts, and then you last Sunday, chose also to become members of Westworth United Church. Last year, we started a tradition where we honor the fifth and tenth anniversary years of retired ministers, 
Um, and last year celebrated the 45th oh, anniversary of their commissioning or ordination. And last year celebrated the 45th anniversary of Marilyn Anderson Corkum, who's back there, her commissioning, uh, as well as the 60th anniversary of Reverend uh, Eleanor Gabe and the 75th anniversary of Gordon Toome's ordination. Today, it is our pleasure to honor the 20th anniversary of your commissioning, Heather, and the 70th anniversary of, of Mac Watts. So, you will hear more about that, the details, in the announcement time. But I, I want to acknowledge, particularly Mac, today, he regularly offers some ministry that's not, it's not as visible as yours, because you're a Fermi team leader and 101 visitor, yeah. and you're, you're up front, right, a lot. But Mac, next week, will be preaching, which will be wonderful. But what you don't know is that Mac offers incredible pastoral care to so many people in this congregation through phone calls, in, including me. <laughs> it's, it's incredible how caring and considerate he is. I don't know how many times people have told me that Mac has called them, and it's often someone yet I hadn't heard of. So thank you, Mac, for that gift of compassion and care. And then you, Heather, have a... Have a a compassion for the sidelined, for those with no voice, including the earth. And I've often heard you ask, who's been left out? Sometimes those who are left out can see another side of a situation. Their voices might offer important teachings, such as the two men who weren't chosen to be part of the 70 elders. The story of Moses highlights the importance of the discernment of our spiritual gifts. Some are called to positions of leadership and others to positions of service. Some are doers and others are visionaries. What we sometimes forget is that discernment is ongoing. I just discerned to give up my car. So our abilities and interests and energies change as we grow. As they shift, so do our spiritual gifts. What can we offer to the ongoing community as changes are apparent? If we don't listen to our bodies and do what gives us energy, we may get stuck doing what drains us. Or we may neglect doing what could give us energy and benefit the congregation. Either way, both we and the congregation lose out if we don't listen to the movement of the Spirit to one another, to ourselves, to the unvoiced. Another theme of this story of Moses is about the whole community pulling together. Moses needed help not only from the 70 elders, but also from the entire community. He needed them to support their leaders and one another to make the best of whatever situation came their way. And they had some pretty difficult manna-like situations <laughs> coming their way. When the whole community could pull together as one and work smoothly as a well-oiled machine, Mountains could be moved. Mm -hmm. The way forward to make room for the Spirit's leadership is through prayer, spiritual direction, even therapy if it's needed. The Spirit helps us identify what we fear, where our negative energy comes from, and she helps us let go of what we need to drop and to recharge when we're tired and discouraged. The Spirit gives us wisdom and hope for our future. So on this day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the birthday of the Church, may we never forget that it has been the winds of the Spirit who has comforted, energized, and guided the Church with her creative breath infused into individuals and into communities across the centuries.
we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 205 from Voices United, like the murmur of the dove song. You will see in your bulletin the words that I'm getting so tired of saying every Sunday, <laughs> so I'm not going to say them anymore. They are simply there to help you know how you may give to the church. On this day, when the Spirit was so lavishly poured out on all, may we lavishly pour out our gifts to one another. We are grateful for all of the ways that those present and those online Give to the ministry of Westworth. Let us pray. God of all peoples and God of all places, we present our offerings that they may be used to extend your liberating reign. With them, we offer our varied ministries that each of us may be part of your answer to the cries of the world. Amen. And we now move to the time of the Ministry of the People. If you have announcements, now's the time to come forward. I was hoping Jewel would make her one last plea <laughs> as we approach the end of May. And with that introduction, you just go right ahead. <laughs> okay. So like the winds of Pentecost, we had many uh, donate, uh, orders in this week. We're at 18,500. We're so close to our $20,000 uh, ordering mark. I'm going to keep it open until Friday. I'm going to close it down on Friday. And again, they're available at Sobeys, uh, Safeway, and Freshco in here. And if you want to, I know somebody had asked if they could send them across Canada, and they are good at any Sobeys or Safeways. But if you look on their website, you can also see other places where they're available there are some stores that are only available in Quebec or Ontario or BC. And uh, so they are also used out there. So if you want to mail one out to somebody out there. So I'm looking forward to letting you know next Sunday what our profit has been. So unless we have 1,500 left to go to get to our mark of getting $20,000 in sales. So thank you. And again, phone me if you need to. I'm going to be out there at the end of the service. I have a couple people who need some help with the form, and I'll be collecting money out there. So thank you. Don't leave. Don't leave. Just a little. There we go. Um, no, because we have a little dialogue here going on. There are some people here who have just returned from being elsewhere who have not a clue what you're talking about. Okay. We're Get doing a fundraiser for the <laughs> Corals Callers, and we are selling Sobeys gift cards. There we go. Um, they had come in 10, 25, 50, 100, and 250 uh, dollar donations, or not donations, uh, and what you purchase, you get. If you buy $100, you get a $100 gift card card back. You, you don't lose any of the profits. Sobeys, it's a fundraiser through Sobeys. So whatever amount they, we sell, 
uh, they give us a percentage. So up to $19,999, we get 5%. And at $20,000, we get 6% back. So it makes a big difference. At $19,000 to $20,000 makes a difference of almost $400. It's like $350 uh, difference. So we're aiming to sell the, up to $20,000. Um, they come to me. I will get them all organized. It takes about one movie and maybe a glass of wine, like you know, and um, I sit there and I sort them all out and keep my puppies far away from them so they don't mess them up. And then I'll bring them to church and they'll be available at church or if you want to come by my house and pick them up, you can do that as well. Um, and it takes about two weeks. So by, I would think, June 15th in around that time, the gift cards will be available to get picked up and picked up from here. And I can leave them with Christine if she's available during the week to be able to pick some up as well. So... That make it clear? That's good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm wearing my team leader of the outreach team hat at this moment. You will hopefully have read in the e-blast uh, last Thursday an article regarding composting in the city of Winnipeg. When Dan and I visited Vancouver Island this spring, we were really curious as to what this lined rectangular pail was underneath our sinks in our rental unit. Lo and behold, we were told by one of our, our hosts that they are compost buckets for kitchen scraps, not just our peels for, um, from vegetables, but paper towels, chicken bones, any kinds of things like that that are kitchen scraps. The buckets are dumped into a large bin, just like our uh, recycle uh, bins and our garbage bins, and put at the front of the curb. They're picked up by the city of, of the greater city of Vancouver, or the Victoria and other cities, and taken to their compost disposal units. In speaking with many folks since we got home, this is not unique to the Vancouver Island. Oodles of cities across this country are composting. Let's join them for heaven's sakes. Please sign one of the postcards that you will find on the table in the narthex. I'll be there. Christine, bless her heart, has even labeled it with the address to City Hall. You don't have to do anything except put your return address and a stamp and drop it in the mailbox. Um, it would be just great. In fact, this is as easy as throwing your kitchen scraps in a bucket. <laughs> These are not uh, kitchen scraps. <laughs> so Ruth Danton, if you could come forward, please. Ruth has just been an amazing addition. Uh, Phil, just what I think, I didn't even know was a void, was a void. So the oboe is my favorite uh, instrument now. So <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. And I really hope to hear you either here or somewhere, Carnegie, somewhere <laughs> in the future. You've just been delightful. So just from the And just one more um, piece of information, um, just to announce that we have hired a pianist, soon to be organist. And so um, it will be announced uh, officially, I guess, in our bulletin next week. The individual, uh, her name is Megan Dufrat, and she was handing in her uh, notice publicly at Meadowood today. So uh, we were unable to let you know before today. But so she'll join us in the summer. So there you go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'd like to just give a shout out to Sharon and the MP committee. They have worked so hard putting so many staff people together. Wow. And I think this is the last missing piece of the puzzle. We have a full complement of staff now going into the fall. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> and your M and M P.
And just a couple more announcements. One is I am cleaning up my library. Some of you already know this. The, uh, there are some books I've pulled that I thought might be of particular interest. They're on the little, little table at the back. There also is a table that the library folks, which would mean Kathy and Lorraine, I think, have pulled out that are specifically LGBTQ and Two-Spirit related. Um, for borrowing, not for taking. <laughs> so uh, browse as well that other table. Uh, mine says, thanks to Christine, who made the little label, what is it, Lorraine's Little Library. Yeah, that, that doesn't actually mean it's a library, it's, it's for you to take. <laughs> um, now we move to, well, two more things. After the service, we have 70, did you say? 67, we've got a lot of cupcakes back there. And we have a good turnout today. So there is, uh, I'm pretty sure, one for each of you, should you uh, care for one, to celebrate um, specifically Mac's 70th anniversary of his ordination and Heather's 20th anniversary of her commissioning. So we hope you can stay for that. Um, the uh, uh, worship team has been putting this together for us today, planning this celebration. Today is also the last Sunday of the month, spare change. If you have any and want to drop it off in the plates as you leave, goes to West Broadway Community Ministry. And the other thing that happens on the last Sunday of the month is to celebrate any kinds of events or birthdays or anniversaries. So if you have one and want to name it, I will begin by saying, someone told me, <laughs> that it is Petra's birthday today. Where's Petra? She's setting up for others, of course. <laughs> Petra, if you can hear us out there, <laughs> we will wish her happy birthday as you see her there. Any other celebrations? Yes, go ahead, Ashley. Wonderful. So for those, and, and um, so there's a neighbor, a dear friend of Jen, it's after five years of going through all the paperwork and her children have arrived from the, from the Philippines. Wow. Wow. So for those who didn't hear, she's been separated from her children for five years, and now they're, now they're finally together. That's a huge celebration. Yes, Carla. It's, sorry? It's Morag's birthday today. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. It's my brother's birthday today, too, so there must be something going on. Is there any, any others? Hey, we have some, well, let's clap, sing. <laughs> what do we do, Dorcas? Clap. We'll clap, we'll clap. All right, okay. Now we will move into the, oh, I don't need a microphone. I don't know why I did that. Uh, prayers of the people. And if you have, oh, there's a pen down there. If you have any prayer requests, I would be glad to receive them now. Any up here? We are glad for George and Bettina to be back with us as we pray for them on the, the recent passing of George's brother. Do you want the microphone? I think maybe... You do you want to just pass this? I think it's on. I'd just like to say my, my family would be very thankful for all the prayers and support that you, you provided to us uh, through any means you possibly could, uh, cards and whatever. But um, my brother died very peacefully. Uh, if you can imagine, he was... Uh, suffering a little bit towards the end of his life, uh, but it came on quite quickly. Um, he had pneumonia and a number of other uh, medical complications, but um, he wanted to have the mask that was helping him breathe removed, 
and it was, and the last moments of his life, they gave him something very special to eat. Now, if you can imagine you receiving something uh, that you love before you die to eat, that's what he received. And he smiled until it was gone, mm -hmm. and then finally he laid back, and he peacefully died. And it was amazing to see this, and I really felt quite honored to have seen that and felt it. But I hope you, too, can have a moment when that happens to you, when you're with someone you really, really love. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I would just like to pray for my sister who has a new onset of chronic pain beginning again after four years free of pain and help her find joy through the pain. And her name? Diana Emberley. Diana. Diana? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any others up here? Any other prayer requests from down here? Yes, go ahead down. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Christine. My partner in law, Jane, awaiting results from heart testing. Okay. Dane? Any other? Yes, yes, go ahead, Carol. Any other? Yes, go ahead, Ashley. What's his name? Louis. Louis. Okay. Anything else? Okay, let us pray together. We are grateful to join our community, to Christian communities all around the world as today we celebrate the power of the Spirit, the wisdom of the Spirit, the gentleness of the Spirit, the Spirit who comforts us, the Spirit who guides us. This is a tremendous gift you have given to us as individuals and to the church, and we are grateful. We pray that you might move through us to comfort others, to strengthen others, to help be a listening presence and perhaps even offer a word or two of wisdom. We thank you that you choose to work through us to minister to others as faulty as we are. And we give you thanks for forgiveness and for grace that allows us to have the strength to apologize and the grace to move on. 
We pray for many people who are dear to us today. We begin with prayers of celebration, and we thank you for Reverend Dr. Mac Watts' 70th anniversary of his ordination and Reverend Heather Robbins' 20th anniversary of her commissioning. We give you thanks for birthdays, for, for those who celebrate birthdays both here and who are not in person with us today. And we pray now for those who are going through tough times. We begin with praying for Shirley Watts as she is recovering from her first round of chemo and preparing for her second round in a couple of weeks. We pray for Elizabeth Pollock, who broke her hip and is recovering from surgery in the hospital. We pray for Dane, Christine's father-in-law, as he awaits results of heart tests. We pray for Louis, Ashley's neighbor, who is dealing with collapsing airways. We pray for wisdom for the doctors and nurses to help him. We pray for Carol and her grief over losing her friend Doreen, and we pray for Doreen's family as they grieve. We pray you will comfort and strengthen them. We pray for Judy's sister, Diana, as she as her pain has returned, and help her through chronic pain that is, that is emerging again. We pray for, for Dan and Ruth's neighbor, Lynn, who fell and broke her shoulder, elbow, and arm. We pray that you will help her through pain, through recovery, and we are grateful for neighbors like Dan and Ruth who are helping her out. We turn our attention now to Sudan. And we pray that they will move towards lasting truth, truce, justice, and peace that transcends ethnic divides. From the Prairie to Pine Regional Prayer List, we offer prayers of thanksgiving and blessing for the Southwest Interlake Pastoral Charge of the United Church. And from the World Council of Churches Prayer Cycle, we offer prayers and thanksgiving of thanksgiving and blessing for the churches today in Angola and Mozambique. We pray with them, God, enlarge our hearts that they may be big enough to receive the greatness of your love. Stretch our hearts that they may take in all those around the world. Expand our hearts that they may take in all those who are not lovely in our eyes and whose hands we do not want to touch. And we now continue with the words of Jesus who taught us to pray to God, our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now sing our grand final hymn that will lead us into our celebration in the Northex. Number 194, Filled with the Spirit's Power, from Voices United.
of wisdom and fortitude light our way with the binding trinity of justice, kindness, and humility. Amen. And go from this place with a tender and a daring love. And whatever you do, do in the name of Jesus as we work to be his hands and feet and face in the world. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.